Hello everyone and welcome to the part two of the Python web application tutorial series. Um, I've drinking tons of coffee so I thought I'd make use of that energy to make uh, this video. So um, I was about to go to the gym but uh, I'll go there after I have been recording this video. So let's start because I'm a I'm a machine gun right now, so let's do this. Um, <clears throat> right, so what we're going to do today is that we're going to start rendering some HTML templates. So let's go into our node app directory again, the root directory. Just to remind you what it looks like, it looks like this, uh, just like that. <laughs> now we got a bunch of files in there actually because we have uh, <laughs> we have got our virtual env stuff in there, so. Yeah, it, it will look a lot bigger now, actually. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's just... Uh, all these, all this stuff that you see is actually from the uh, Venv directory thing. So, all right. But uh, let's open up our editor instead. And uh, actually, let's source our Venv first, just like that. Source Venv bin activate. Then I'm going to open up my editor. And all right, so this is what it looks like. We have our note, root note app directory, and then we have a note app directory inside of that, and then we have the onnit file and the app file and the main file. Uh, right, so what we're gonna do today is to start rendering some templates. So the best practice for this is to have a templates directory inside of your uh, node app directory in here. So let's create a templates directory. And let's just uh, add a template in there. Let's call it uh, uh, index.html. You can name this whatever you want, but we're gonna call it index.html. And now we're gonna start uh, writing some HTML in here, actually. Um, I have a snippet for this. Uh, so I'm just gonna use that. I'm just gonna remove some stuff for now. So we just have the normal HTML stuff. So we got the uh, doc type, we got the HTML, we got the head, we got the body. Um, so yeah, let's start. So let's put an HTML tag in here. We're gonna use an H1 tag. You can use, you can write whatever HTML you want in here. We're just gonna use this to demonstrate how it works. And yeah, let's just call this uh, hello world. Just like that. Now inside our, our app.py, where we have our routes, um, <clears throat> just to make this a little bit easier to read, we're gonna have just one route. Let's just call this one route. <laughs> and we're not gonna return text right now. Uh, we're actually going to import another thing from Flask here called render template which is used to render HTML templates. So <clears throat> now what we want to do is that we're going to do return uh, render template in index.html. Now I think Flask knows to look for this templates directory. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think, I think so. So let's just do that. Uh, Let's rename our route to slash. So this will be our front page, actually. Now we need to go to the terminal and we need to start our application by running Python. Main. Make sure you're in the virtual end. Make sure you see this and hit enter. Now we're going to go to the browser and we're going to write localhost 5000. So what if we want to render some data in, in our template? Well, then we can use the Jinja templating language that's built into Flask. Um, I will put a link in the description if you want to learn more about Jinja templating, because uh, uh, they have a lot of good information on their website, uh, better information that I have in my head that I could could uh, <laughs> could possibly give you. So yeah, just just go to that link if you want to learn more. But basically, what if we want to have some sort of loop here and render multiple items. Maybe we'll, would, we would have uh, some data coming from a database that we would like to render here. Well, let's just create a new little tag. Um, some Lee stuff. 
yeah, we could have lead tags representing each item. So let's do. Uh, so this is Gen Jinja templating, as I told you. Uh, for item in items. So for every item, we want to render a lead tag. And then we want to end the for. And then maybe we we'll, would we'll render the item dot name. So in Jinja templating, logic goes inside of these sort of tags. It's uh, curly braces with percentage characters. Um, and when you actually want to spit out data, when you want to render something, you use uh, double braces like this. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and maybe we don't want to render we never want to render an empty UL tag, so what we will do is that we'll check if items exist first. So if items and if. So yeah, that was Jinja templating. Um, and it is Jinja too. Right? And you can actually just pass data to these, this render template function. Uh, so let's actually create our items list here. Items equals, uh, and you can imagine we're getting this from a database, so we can be a little playful here and do a method uh, def uh, get items from database or something. And we can just imagine that this is our database, and we can return um, a list, and we had a name value in there, I guess name Bob, uh, let's add a couple of those, Bob, uh, Lisa, John, Anna, um, let's do, uh, 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 let's type uh, my name in there actually. There we go. So now we can actually do this items equal get items from database and we can actually pass that variable in here items equals items and uh, there we go now we should see a list of cool and it still works the same so that's it for this video in the next video we will uh, actually start working on our uh, uh, note uh, app application and actually uh, make it possible to create notes and stuff like that and I will also introduce the concept of blueprints, which is actually a, a, a way to separate your views into different files and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope, hope I see you in the next video.